Hey, what's up, guys? Good morning. I'm totally excited, you guys. This is great. We got a ton of people on early. Um, I'm excited about today's topic because a one of my favorite people, Brendan Hefford, is here to talk SEO with us. Woo -woo. And uh, b this is a topic I think it's never going to go away. We want to understand SEO for the rest of us, right? Which is what Brendan's going to uh, do. For Brendan, for the people that aren't super familiar with you, I'd love a little bit of a, we don't have to do the whole interview, you know, you were born. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> but you give us a little background. Yeah, so I think it's one of those things, like, I kind of tell this story a lot. Like, I, you, you go to college because people expect you to. And at 18, they sit you down and they're like, choose your life path. I don't like, I don't trust an 18 year old to do a lot of things. Never mind, like choose their whole path in life. Mm -hmm. And I sat down and cause I'm, I'm 34. So some people that are watching will remember this. Some people might not, but like, I remember when we had like the, uh, the course catalog where they give you that like phone book of all the courses. I'm like, what courses should I take? And I decided like in that moment at 18 sitting in like the student union at Ithaca college to be a teacher. And it was so it was so absurd, right? So I go through college, I do all the right things, I start teaching, and I'm like, oh, this is cool, this is great, you know, I'm like 22 and it's fine. And then all of a sudden I'm like 24, 25, and I'm like, ooh, this is not what I thought it would be. And I started like trying to like learn about other things and like pursue passions on the side. And one of the passions was Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Ended up building a website for that and kind of grew that, right? I had a website. I ended up building a website that was like a affiliate website. And then I ended up building my own like e-commerce brand where I made the uniforms and everything else. And it all went really well. Um, but kind of at a certain point in my career, like I was teaching at the same time, I became an assistant principal. My business started tanking because I had built it primarily on Facebook. And when <laughs> Facebook reach went to 0.001% and nobody could see my stuff anymore, that was bad. And I was just like, what, like, what am I going to do? Like, how am I going to make this work? You know, I, I, I felt completely underwater. I had just had, I have three kids now, um, but we had just had our first son. So I had this baby that I loved, my wife that I loved, a career that I hated. I was having like panic attacks on Sunday night. It was awful. Like it was absolutely terrible. And like, I, I didn't feel like I could reach escape velocity in my business to quit my job. So I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And one of the things I decided to do was first, like, instead of put, go all in on the business, I just got a new job. I know that sounds silly. Like, we're always talking about, like, building a business and things like that. And people think, like, their business will allow them to quit their job. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to get a new job. Keep building your business. Get a new job. Um, so I got a new job. Kept building my business. And I was like, this isn't the thing. Decided to sell it. And once I had sold, like, the jujitsu company, I was like, I don't know what to do next. And I kind of just doubled down on the only thing that had ever really worked since social didn't really work for me anymore. Um, I just doubled down on SEO and started helping people, took on a couple clients, ended up getting asked to become the SEO director at an agency here in Chicago. And then I still get to do my own thing on the side with SEO, which is pretty amazing. I get to build websites that kind of run on autopilot because the traffic just comes in from Google automatically. People sign up they buy courses, they buy whatever. Um, and that's really nice. Like it supports a, a lifestyle that I'm really happy with. And um, I also get to work with really cool clients, which is fun too. Uh, nice. So <laughs> a lot of people probably listening to this thinking SEO, you just figured it out. Then you, you dove in, you figured it out. Yeah. And you know, and we're going to talk, uh, Brendan has kind of an outline for this guys, because you know, we, we've done a live stream together on SEO and I've interviewed Brendan. And one of the things that I love most about it is even though he's SEO focused, he's also not like, you know, talk, you know, write for robots, create for keywords. It's oh. really creating for an audience. So do you want to talk on that for a sec? Yeah. Um, I think I do have a very unique take on it. Number one, um, the, the reason that I called like my brand SEO for the rest of us is because I just kept realizing there was a growing population of people who felt inherently that SEO is not for them. And the reason is because there's a lot of people on the internet that overcomplicate, well, two reasons. Number one, SEO is the one skill you can't learn by Googling. Like if I want to learn how to be better at ping pong, I'm probably going to Google it, right? <laughs> but the problem is because SEO is manipulating Google. When you start Googling how to learn SEO, you get all sorts of spammy, weird, bad stuff. And it, it, you end up getting these SEO blogs where they just talk about SEO on their SEO blog and they never have actually done anything other than that. It's a huge mistake. You end up with articles that are like 
how to learn SEO fast. And then you go there and it's like 9,000 words and has like 400 links and you're like out to other stuff. And you're like, what? This is not fast. <laughs> this is so complicated. And what's your brain do? Oh, this guy's got a course. He's got a checklist. He's got a cheat sheet. I should download that. I should buy that. And they over, this is kind of reason number two, they overcomplicate things to make it sound like, you know, you got to buy, you got to get the secrets. They're secrets. Truth. There are no secrets. <laughs> I manage almost a million dollars a year in clients. Um, like I make over a hundred thousand dollars from my own projects and my own like career. And like, there's no secrets at this point. It's just that SEO is not complicated. It's just not easy. And that's kind of where I think people get confused is they think like, well, it's not easy. So it has to be super complicated. It's not, you just have to do the right stuff for a long time. And that's like anything. Um, what I like about SEO is that I get to build my platform. I get to build, I get to get people coming to my website that want to be there. I'm not running ads and distracting them and trying to pull them from whatever else they're doing. They're searching for me and what I do. Um, and yeah, I think that's a big part of it. I don't, Kim, I don't think I answered your question at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is typical. This is typical. I'm like, what was my question? <laughs> Well, but let's back up a little bit because one, so Brendan does have a course, you guys, and it's the whole SEO for the rest of us. It's live. First of all, why did you decide to do this course? And I get it that, that there's a ton of bad information out there. And yeah. the one thing that I was going to jump in really quick, because it's funny when you said, you know, you can Google ping pong to get better at it, but you still have to play ping pong to get yep. better at it. Right. So it's the same thing with SEO. You still have to do the work. And it's funny because everybody knows I get a little bit ranty with, you know, people looking for, oh, I know it's going to be this thing, or I'm going to learn this skill, or I'm going to learn. And you guys, I love testing and trying stuff all the time, mm -hmm. but I still create content. I still email my list. I still do the basics all the time. Mm -hmm. And so there's nothing wrong with trying things, but I see people jumping into something and they have zero foundation, no asset, no, no platform to, to sell from in essence. So none of those things work right without this. So let's, let's back up to the course and if you want to explain what it is and why you decided to do it. Yeah. And, um, and can I ask them? Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question, then I'm going to interrupt you. Um, if they have questions as you go. So if you guys have specific SEO questions, you know, Brennan's going to answer them. So go ahead, drop them in, and I will moderate as we continue. <laughs> it's all right, Kim. I feel like I'm like doing the politician thing where you ask a question and then I just answer whatever question I wanted you to ask. <laughs> you know, have you ever watched that in debates? You're like, that didn't answer the question. They just started talking about something else. No, um, because I so, cannot watch politicians, but go ahead. <laughs> fair, enough. fair enough. I'm a glutton for punishment. Um, so why did I create the course? Um, a couple of reasons. Well, first of all, like SEO is not all that I do. Um, you'll see if you go check out the event page for this live stream, I think somebody even commented in there like his emails are really good. Like I've paid a lot of attention to how to write. Not There's no, again, no secrets. Like I write how I speak. It's how I also think you should write for SEO. And that comes across really well in emails. And I make stuff that's fun for me to make, right? Mm -hmm. um, my emails have gifts. And some people are like, oh, I don't think this is a high quality course or whatever because you use gifts. I'm like, cool, you're not one of my people. That's fine. Like, no worries. Um, but I do a lot of Who things. Like other gifts. I'm sorry. I don't, people don't. And that's totally, I've gotten that feedback. Like, you have a yeah. gift on the top of your sales page. It made me feel like, this would be a lower quality course. And I was like, fair, not wrong. Um, but just, I think that's great. That tells me that like, and that was from a person who bought the course and I'm like, cool. Like I, if that's turning people off, then they probably are not somebody who's going to enjoy me teaching live workshops for four weeks. Right. Um, with a lot of gifts probably. Well, so, I have to say the lot, the gift was Stefan from Saturday Night Live. And I was like, Oh yeah. I definitely I love <laughs> Bill Hader, Bill Hader just yeah. laughing behind his hands. It's so good. Also, I spelled it S-T-E. I spelled it wrong when I tweeted it before, and I was just, I felt very bad. Anyways, why did I make that course? Um, you do client work for so long, and you try to, get, like, I just, I'm a teacher. Like, I, I feel like I'm drowning if I'm not sharing what I'm learning and sharing what I know. And it got to the point where people were like, bro, are you going to do a course at some point? Because, like, I can't hire you. But like, I would like to learn more and I feel bad just emailing you a lot. And it became a way for me to just be like, hey, here's this other thing. Like now there's an in-between. There's an in-between, um, you know, hope I answer a tweet or an email, which I always do because that's important to me. Again, I love teaching. Um, so I always will as much as I can. And number two is like, 
the other option, it was like, you're either here or like way over there and you can hire me and be a client. Cause I'm not, I mean, I'm not cheap, but I'm definitely not for somebody starting a blog or like, Hey, I've got a product. I make $2,000 a year from it. I like to get more traffic to it. Cool. You probably can't afford to hire me. But like now that I have a course and especially the way I'm doing this now, teaching with, with live workshops and Q and a sessions and office hours and everything, really giving people a lot of attention. Um, I really think that there's a nice in between. So it was really just kind of an answering to an ask. Um, so it fulfilled my need to teach, but also other people's uh, kind of ask to be taught. Um, sorry, I just see so one more. Uh, Yale was saying too, she already bought the course, can't wait, gifts and yeah. all. Um, yeah. So, and here's a great question uh, from Devinder. He said, Roundup posts. I love writing them. He said, sure, it might be SEO disaster content, but he feels good writing them and they also make money. He makes money from them. You know, should he worry about Google in that regard? Um, so I need a little more context. Like, what are we, are we talking about like expert roundups where you ask 30 people for their opinions on stuff? Are we talking about roundups like the 10 best hosting solutions for WordPress in 2019? Um, it kind of depends. I think anything that solves a problem for somebody is really, from an SEO perspective, that's where I always lean towards is like, this should solve a problem. Um, sure, like it should hit educate, empower, entertain. That's like, again, the gifts and be entertain, like all of those things. I want to do all three uh, in an article or in a whatever, in a video or whatever. But from a search perspective, yeah, by all means, uh, I write a lot of articles where I get other people's opinions. It's one of the ways that I write things like I, I it, so two things. Number one, and we might get into this more, the way I feel about SEO, the future of SEO is relationships. It's not links. It's not anything else. It's all of these other things happen because of your relationships and not the other way around. You don't get links from people and then build a relationship. Um, you don't get guest posts and then build a relationship. So because I think it's all like super relationship focused, doing a roundup post and asking people their opinion for your stuff, like just deepens the relationship and it shows people that you care about that you care about them. And you care about them not just as a person who tweets what they're watching on Netflix or anything like that, which I love, um, but uh, also you care about them as a professional and that's, I should, shows a lot of respect and value. Um, well, that's a good, and, and I, Devinder answered here, but he does a lot with Beaver Builder and so he does a pro Beaver, like a weekly, it's a roundup and he'll talk about, and he links to relevant articles, updates, podcasts, anything, but it's very niche specific. Yeah. Um, so those really work for him. And you know, it's funny, Jason Resnick was saying too, um, that he has spent a lot of money. <laughs> I've been a part of highly polished courses that end up being you got the poop emoji. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then of course he said, not that your course isn't polished by any means. Um, no, it's, <laughs> it's not. I mean, and that's part of it. Like you're walking into a classroom with me and that's what I'm, that's what I'm selling. Right. I'm not selling like, look at how fancy this is. And I'm going to do a video tour and you can see 75 lessons on the left side and all these other things. Like the two, two of the best courses I've ever taken have been a hundred dollar courses. Um, and I say that like really transparently, like one of them was from David Seitman Garland. He had a court, like his first ever course was like how to do webinar or his like second small course was like how to do webinars. It was like a hundred bucks and it was amazing. It taught pretty much exactly how, uh, it was how Russell Brunson teaches the perfect webinar. But like years before I had heard him talking about that, I was like, Oh, this is crazy. This is such good value for a hundred dollars. I felt like I kind of stole it. <clears throat> but then like, yeah, so they're not always the high price courses. Um, a lot of times we buy high price courses because of the case studies and all of those types of things. And what we fail to realize when we buy a high price course with case, big case studies is those people probably would have been successful without the course. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like I yeah. usually used to tell people, well, you know, teachers would tell me when I was a principal, well, th these kids are getting A's. I'm like, you're not doing that though. Those kids would get A's if you just gave them the textbook and left them alone. Like, you don't get credit for the kids who are getting A's. You get credit for the kids who would be getting C's, D's, and F's who are doing better because of you. Um, and I think that's also the way I feel about courses, right? Like I want to take a course, not that it is super expensive or has the best case studies, but I think it's going to give me the exact answer to the question that I have. And I think a so, question, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. So, I mean, so from the course perspective, one thing I love about this too, and this always works better for me personally is like, I like running stuff live. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I kind of do that. I don't know if you want to call it beta or whatever, but I like doing it live. I've got it outlined. I do it live. And I'm like, okay, this worked. That didn't work. You know, mm-hmm. so your course, your it's all live sessions with you. Yeah, we'll do it via Crowdcast so people can ask questions ahead of time. Um, and then it'll just be like live Q&A at the end of each lesson. We'll then dive into like homework and assignments and things like that. Like, again, like I come from a teaching background. That's why self-paced courses that are like, hey, here's a bunch of videos. Good luck. Like nobody does those. Even I remember uh, Udemy says that like the, the figure of the number of people that complete their courses is like abysmally low. And I think their Udemy for a long time, their most popular course was Seth Godin's course that he had on there. And even that was like only like a 26% completion rate. Like people just, you buy them for the same reason, Kim, I don't know if you, uh, I can tell you, I see your books on your shelves behind you over here. (laughs) I have shelves full of books, have not read all of them, bought them very aspirationally. And then they've sat, you know, I, I heard Gretchen Rubin on a podcast, loved her, bought three books, have not touched them yet. Sorry, Gretchen. It's just, you buy these things aspirationally. You buy the course and you get this little feeling of success. Like, cool, I got my email marketing handled. I got my SEO handled. Then you don't do the thing. Uh, I was just debating with somebody in a Facebook group this morning. They're like, how many books have you read this year? I'm like, that is the wrong target. Number of books read is the wrong target. It's a number that you have applied and like seen a like substantial change in your life. Um, they're like, no, you're like saying like sleep less. I'm like, no, I'm just saying don't sleep all day and then gloat about it. Like that's like, let's do as much as we need to do. The same thing with courses, like with my course or any course, like there's a million ways to get traffic. If you want to double down on Pinterest, Pinterest works, Facebook works, everything. Twitter maybe doesn't work. Maybe don't buy a course on Twitter or LinkedIn, but like, I don't know. They probably, they work for really good for some people in different industries. Yeah. So they do. Um, SEO is just one of those things that I think can work for everybody. And that's what I like about it. Like I have the ability to help all of my friends, which is such a cool thing now. Um, and I, I love like giving that skill to other people. Um, I loved your book analogy. It's really funny to say that because you know what happens is I tend to buy the audio book. I consume it and I'm like, I need the physical book because then I want to go through and I yeah. tend to use some of them as reference, but I, I totally do the same thing. And it's funny because then I look at stuff like where I've got like expert secrets, right? I've read that book twice. It's dog-eared. It's underlined. Yeah. I've taken it. I've sat with it. And so it, we're really at this implementation where people are going lots of noise. Um, so a cu- couple things, I'm going to jump in. We've got questions and I've got yeah. a couple questions for you too. And um, Jason was saying too, he's bought, you know, high dollar courses think he's going to have access to the expert and he got the team. Uh, he mm-hmm. likes that you're positioning it as you in a classroom. I am right there with you, Jason. It's, you know, a lot of people will jump in or they, they, they join masterminds and they do things and it's like, Oh, they're going to build a connection with the person teaching. And it's like, you don't. And it's just, I don't know. I think those days are coming to an end personally. Yeah. Where you, um, you get directed to like support at whatever domain they are. And it's like, mm-hmm. I, you can hear, we have live chat open. You can chat with a member of my team. It's like, ooh, no, I don't look like if you don't have time to like, if you want to keep scaling your, your course business or whatever you're selling uh, and you don't have time to actually interact with people, like figure out a better way. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I don't know. That's one thing. Like I never, I would never buy like, since we taught you and I both talked about Russell and stuff, I would never buy click funnels or even one of any click funnels course and think that I actually had access to Russell, but he makes it really clear and he puts out so much good free info that like you kind of do. I don't know. I think, but I totally agree that like you think you're going to get access to this person. You think you'll be able to ask questions and then you're pushed off. I bought a, I had a $1,500 a month uh, business coach way before I should have had one. Uh, And it was sounded really cool. And I was like, awesome. And then I found out like kind of into it that like I get two 30 minute calls per month with different members of his team. And then I got to talk to him once every six months. And I got to go to San Diego for a mastermind with him that I had to pay for the flight and I had to pay for everything to go to, to go talk to him. Um, And after the first like two months where like one guy told me I should use Twitter more and the other person told me I should set goals. I was like $1,500 well spent, Um, (laughs) you know, like, Oh, cool. Thanks for the (laughs) advice. I could have read that like everywhere. Um, so yeah, I totally agree. And that's one of the things, that's something I was actually talking to my wife about. She was, and I'm going to be really transparent here. She's like, Brendan, what are you selling? Like, what exactly are people buying? I'm like, I- I'm selling access. Like, this is the only time you'll have access like this. I, as much as I will 
work until my eyes bleed to like answer every email. Like I, I'd be lying to say that I see a day, I don't see a day where that stops being effective, mm -hmm. where I stop being able to answer every, even this like launch, like I sent out an email that asked people to reply and I got like 50 replies and I was like, oh, and I had to like <laughs> thoughtfully reply to every single one. And that took like two days. And I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. Like they're getting other emails before they're getting my reply. And I, that felt yucky. And I was like, maybe I should rethink that. So yeah, like there will come a day when I can't reply timely in a timely manner to everybody's emails. But until then, like I, I want to do that. I want to sell that access. Like you get somebody, you just happen to catch me at the right point in my career where like I have that time and I have that access or you can have that access. So that's, yeah, I think that's a big bonus for me because that's what I would want too, just like you. Yeah. I mean, and I've done, you know, it's funny where you're mentioning David Simon Garland because I've got his great awesome online courses and his webinar one yep. and his style with the webinar works more for me than the perfect webinar. And it was, but it was like, I went through and I did the work to figure that all out. Um, couple things too. So, um, let's back up. Oh, and Jason is saying, by the way, uh, your video on YouTube about how you put those books together for your background, Brandon, he said it cracked him up. Um, so it has like 176 views and it's 20 minutes long and I worked really hard on it. It's very bad. Thank you for watching it. It was, it was so fun. Uh, I just think it's so silly. Well, yeah, but I believe if it's not fun, I don't do it. So there's yeah. that. But uh, Jody was saying too that it's because people want transformation, not information, is when the course, but that was way back up. But when we were talking about, you know, taking courses and, and what is working and what's not working. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, hold on, we got, um, you did respond. Yale said you did respond to my email. Thank you. So I wanted to ask you, I was thinking about this um, mm -hmm. in terms of, because there's a lot of times like I will write an email and I'm like, oh, this is good. I'm going to post it on my site too. At the same time, I like doing the longer, like, I think I'm very, I was very excited. My, one of my, my year in review podcast posts was like 3000 plus words, but I took a lot of time doing it and everything. But then there's other ones where it's like, oh, this is a 700 word email, which is probably kind of long. Is that hurting me to, to post that? And, and I, I do SEO. I don't worry about it, but I still publish it and I still share it. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. And you and I have talked about this a lot and we've talked about a lot in the content creators group too, that like SEO is just one part of content. Like not everything has to be SEO content. I'm a big believer in uh, kind of this model that HubSpot has really popularized uh, called like pillar and cluster pages where you have like this pillar page that you really want to rank. Um, and then you kind of have this smaller like cluster content around it that links to like they link back and forth They pass that equity and authority to each other So you might have like a pillar page about I don't know link built like I'll use an SEO example like link building And then my cluster content might be like link building for e-commerce link building for mom blogs link building for you know I don't even know um, Link building for window washers like you have all this cluster content around it might rank in Google, yeah, but like is also like highly shareable and things like that. So not everything has to be for search. Um, I just think it's valuable if it can serve multiple purposes. And like one of the things, I think one of the things that I'm trying to consider here is like, is it is it necessarily hurting you? No, like it's not hurting you, but I do think that the more you can put on your website that's substantial and then see what sticks and drive links to it, like, it's not, it's not a negative thing. The only time we see issues with, I'm kind of getting into the weeds a little bit, uh, of like site bloat, where you have sites with like too many pages and it kind of hurts Google's ability to crawl the site, is when you have something like Moz, I remember for a while had like something like 100,000 forum posts that were getting no traffic for like a year, so they just deleted them all. And that wow. drastically increased the rate that Google could crawl the website and crawl those like forum posts and all those different things. And then that increased their rankings. Right. But you, most of us watching this and we'll never have like six figure <laughs> extra yes. posts on our website. Um, yeah. uh, that's not a problem for most of us. So I think like the big thing here is like, no, it doesn't hurt. Um, I love long form emails. Like I think it's one of those things, like if you're, uh, if you're reading, you're reading, I, there's a guy named John Romanello, um, who I absolutely adore. He's like, uh, he was, huge in the fitness world for a number of years. He was Gary V's original trainer. He's the guy who like kind of mentored Mike Vacanti who became like Gary's next kind of trainer. Um, and 
I kind of followed uh, John through all of this, and I'd always felt like he was a very good writer. He would kind of hint at like how much he loved writing, and now he's like, I'm done with fitness. I'm all in on writing. He just made a Facebook post the other day. You you start reading, it's like, hey, you want to learn something here? Let me tell you about this thing called the platypus. And he starts writing about the platypus, and you're a solid eight paragraphs deep before he's like, you just spent all that time reading <laughs> about the platypus. Like, what if you could do this about the things you cared about? and get people to read every bit of it. What if you, and I was like, oh, he just Jedi mind tricked me. <laughs> um, and like, that's, so like, I, I, I'm cool with long form emails. Paul Jarvis writes really long emails and I love that. Like if you're a good writer, like write those. If you have, I think even better. If you're not a good writer, but you have something to say, do it. That's the most important. Well, and that's how you get better, right? Like I would never call myself a writer. I enjoy the process and I enjoy taking the time. I, I do edit them. Not that it always may come across that way, but I do check them. And it's just, I, I enjoy the process of writing it and it is working. I get feedback, I get replies. So from that piece, you know, and I don't publish everything necessarily on the site, but I was just curious. Um, mm -hmm. You guys go ahead, keep the questions coming to you. You're getting a lot of feedback too. Like Jody was saying, duct tape marketing calls them hub pages, corner yeah. shelf content, all those things. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to ask you, I was thinking about this in terms of social media and how it works with your content, right? Like it, it's funny because I mean, I will stay active on Facebook. I've got this group. I adore it. It's like my happy place. But for the most part, I mean, I share my content on other platforms, but I don't know, I've eased up a little bit about stressing about being everywhere all the time. And I'm wondering, is it better to focus on social content that shows up in search, right? Like YouTube or Pinterest. I mean, does it matter? Like, but I'm thinking if I was going to spend more time and energy sharing my content on social platforms, wouldn't it be smarter to do the search piece of it? Um, so I think we're, we're going to reach a point with uh, Google and Pinterest. I, I'm still amazed that Google, Google would never rank your gated content, right? Like if you had a course that was gated, Google would never rank that. But for some reason they rank Pinterest, which then as soon as you go to it requires you to log in or sign up. I think the days of that uh, are, are short where they're going to continue to do that. I think Pinterest is in a very dangerous spot getting that organic traffic from Google where Google's going to, I, I don't want to like, here, two things. Number one, I struggle with Facebook because I feel like they're a pretty nefarious company. Like they're they're pretty shady and very sketchy. Uh, but I also work with Google, who is low key. I'll tell you the secret: way shadier, way sketchier. Um, so I can't like be doing both. Um, but I think that there's a play for Google really soon where they're going to bomb out Pinterest organic traffic, and the business of Pinterest is going to start tanking, and they're going to be like we'd be willing to acquire you if you were interested. Um, I don't like when you control the traffic source and you've given it to them for years and all of a sudden you take away dinner. Uh, they're like, Oh no, 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 please. No, keep it on. Um, yeah. And who doesn't want to be bought by Google? I mean, yeah, I'm exactly. Well, I think, and then like same thing with YouTube, like ranks way better than Vimeo, like not a surprise. Um, so I think it's one of those things like, should I create videos? Yeah, absolutely. But I think, I love video. I love YouTube because it's so much more democratic because uh, they have so much more data where the number one things on there are like clicks. So your thumbnail and your headline, get the clicks and then watch time. Like it's so democratic. If people watch a hundred percent of it, if all of the people who watch it, watch all of it, all of a sudden it shoots up the rankings and YouTube is going to promote that like crazy. Um, that doesn't happen with organic because once they come to your site, Google doesn't have as much information about them. Um, they are looking at Google analytics, like, people think they don't use that data. Like if it's a free product, you're the product. They're using all of that data that they get on you. And like, yeah. So I think like being able to create those other assets is extremely valuable. But I also think that um, you have to be really careful about like what you're creating and why. Um, if I was going to create videos, it wouldn't be with the goal of ranking them in Google. It would be with the goal of ranking them and doing well in uh, YouTube, like organically there. So, and then, I mean, I mean, obviously, like most of the stuff I do, I want to create a poster on it, right? So this is turning, I mean, this is going to be a great repurposed podcast because we're not doing screen sharing or whatnot. But at mm -hmm. the same time, if I, I, I can put the video into the post and do all those. So I guess I'm asking you <laughs> to pull out your crystal ball. You've given us a little prediction, but I mean, mm -hmm. where would, where are you spending your time and energy 
in the content promotion piece, right? Because that plays a role in SEO as well, right? Yeah, so Google did this huge update in August. Um, and to be frank with you, it tanked one of my websites. Um, other ones did really well, but one of my personal projects it tanked and I know exactly why. So this was called the medic update. And a lot of the problem is when they call it and they name it like that, people think it's like medic, like it only affects health websites. It's not true. It was an, it was an authority update. And what that means is Google was looking around the rest of the internet and saying, did the person who wrote this, are they an authority on this topic? And the number one way that I knew that that happened was not only because like the, like we talk about it in the industry, but I looked at my own search. So everybody probably Googles their name, their own name every once in a while. The things that used to rank, it was like my homepage, my Twitter, my Instagram, and then it was podcast interviews that I had done, right? Uh, what changed was that it was, my homepage, my Twitter, my Instagram, my author page at Growth Lab, my author page at Fizzle, my author page at somebody else. And what Google is doing is saying, these author pages that you have on other websites, we're now seeing you're an expert in this stuff. And you write about it a lot of other places. Um, I have a photography website called Photo MBA where I just teach business to photographers. But I don't have, now granted, I probably have like 30 guest posts around the internet that have my thing. But I think that was confusing for Google. They're like, wait, he's not a photographer. Like, that's not all he's writing about everywhere. And I have this confusing info. He's not an expert. And they decreased a lot of my post rankings during that time. Um, I think like one of the big things when I think about marketing and when I think about creating content is you know, is this valuable for my website or is this also valuable for somebody else's website? Could I repurpose this somewhere else? I love going through my old content and going, would this make a good guest post somewhere else? Like, would this be helpful somewhere? Um, and then looking to see if I can guest post it, looking to see if I can get it placed or like, Hey, um, I noticed you wrote about this. Like a lot of people do like link outreach. That's really spammy and bad because the like gurus tell them to. Um, it's really better to have a value out of like, hey, I saw you had this post. I have some thoughts on it. I've included them below. It's like an additional four paragraphs. It'll help you rank better. I would love it if you would add that to the post. Like that, what a cool value add. And they might link to you and they might not, but it's fine. Um, but making people's articles better is like a really good way to build those relationships. So I'm always thinking like, where can I repurpose this somewhere else? Um, instead of just on the website. But as far as like my crystal ball and things like that, I just think that the number one goal is just to continue to publish on your own site, but also everywhere else on the internet to show that like you're a real authority for this stuff because Google can connect all of that together. Well, that brings up the one thing and, and we saw this, uh, Picha had posted an interesting you know, comment in the content courage group about link building. And it's mm. funny because I get requests all the time, right? And, the and they're they're very generic. Oh, I read this and I think this would be this, right? Whatever. And it's funny because there's there's I've started I had started thinking like being snarky. I want to email back and be like, what are you doing for me? Right. Mm -hmm. But she did. She she literally said, Well, I'm assuming you're gonna link back. I forget her exact phrasing, but they said yes, and they're giving her a link back. So part of the course you're gonna teach link building too for mm -hmm. normal people. So yeah, I, I, I don't know if you want to touch on that, talk on that. I'd love to. Cause I'm super, I'm super passionate about it. Um, so I did the same thing, right? When I got started, I started taking on SEO clients. I'm like, all right, these jokers need some links. Um, so I read what the guru said and you know, I, whatever, I'll be transparent. I read what Brian Deed said on Backlinko and he said, you send that email, that same email we've all gotten. That's like, Hey, I read your article, insert article title. I thought, <laughs> and I thought it was really interesting. I've written about something similar link would you like to put it in your article, the end? And he told so many people to do that. And so many people did it that now we're kind of like, we don't even see ads. We're kind of like ad blind. Um, like so many people did that, that it just got played out. And you know what that's hilarious is that tactic still works. You know where it still works? In the SEO niche. If you're an SEO blog asking other SEO bloggers for links, they get it. And they're willing, you can say like, oh, I'll give you a link from another website. Like all this other exchanges end up happening and like it works in the SEO niche, but it does not work. Try emailing some like gardening blog and being like, hey, give me a link. They're gonna be like, what? What is this? <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't, why would I do that? Like in the, in the text, like can I, how do I give it to you? Like they don't even understand the thing and like that type of outreach doesn't work. So 
what I started doing um, is pursuing something that came into my ecosystem over and over again uh, through Noah Kagan, through Tim Ferriss, through Russell Brunson, uh, this book uh, by Chet Holmes, where he talks about this thing called the Dream 100. And the Dream 100 is simply if I had 100 ideal clients, 100 ideal customers, in my case, 100 ideal websites that I want links from, um, what would those be? And then if I were to only get five or 10 of them, would it be worth it to pursue this? So I put together that list because what was happening before is I was sending out thousands of canned emails from Gmail addresses and getting my Gmail addresses blocked from Google because like too many people were marking them as spam. Like it's, it was bad. And who wants to do that all day, Kim? Like I felt terrible just like canned email, copy and paste the email address, copy and paste the article title, copy and paste my link, next, send, send. And it was game. And what happened is I probably sent out thousands of these and I got three links from websites. Fun fact, how many of those websites still exist today? Zero. <laughs> None. So I did all of that work for lit literally nothing. Um, versus can I reach out and build a relationship with somebody whose website's going to be around for 10 years? With somebody who really cares and somebody who by having a relationship with them is going to offer all of these other benefits beyond just a link. Like why don't we just do business building? So the way that I do it now and the way I do it at uh, the agency that I work at for huge clients, for $100 million venture back startups is like we put together a dream 100 for them. And then we pursue that very earnestly. And the way we do it is we send less emails better. Mm -hmm. You know, if, you know, if, if you would have received an email that was like, hey, Kim, like super personalized details, like they'd clearly listened <clears> to four or five of your podcasts and like, pulled out things you had in common and they just approached you as a person who was invested in you long-term, that would really change the relationship, right? And it doesn't even start out with asking for a link. It's just like, hey, I saw this, I thought it was great. It might even be like, do you, you know, I didn't see any guest posts on your website, but like, you know, I was curious. And I mean, first of all, if I've never seen a guest post on the website, I'm probably not gonna reach out to them because they probably don't do that. Um, but like just continuing, like building that relationship and reaching out as an actual human instead of like, hey, can I get that link, bro? Um, like that's the worst. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like yeah. be interested. It's, it's so funny. The same tips that work in dating and courtship and friendship are the best ways to reach out via email. And by pursuing more of a dream 100, if I only get 10 or five, um, those matter infinitely more. They move the needle so much more. And then I can keep going back to that well. I've written for Growth Lab and the editor who made my work way better than it was when I sent it to him, uh, his name's Sean Blanda. And I now have a relationship with Growth Lab, but now Sean is the editor at Envision, this really great like design kind of app that we use to prototype mm -hmm. a lot of stuff. And now I can say, Sean, like, hey, you're at Envision now. I would love to write for you again at Envision. And now I have two relationships because I cared more about the relationship. I think I pursued Sean to write that article for a year and a half, maybe. Like, he had, like, all sorts of stuff going on in his family. And he was traveling and all of this stuff. And I just kept following up, following up via Twitter, checking in. Checking in, like, a freaking person. Like, <laughs> Checking in like, hey man, like last time we talked, like he said something to me and I, when I follow up with him, I just reference that because I care because I'm a person. And like when you do that, all of a sudden everything changes. Um, your whole business changes, the whole like mindset of things. And that was a big impetus for this course is like, let's do this as like real people. And what's cool is that Kim, anybody can reach out like that. You don't have to be HubSpot. You don't have to be a big name, like to get a link. Like you don't have to have this like cool brand or whatever else. You just have to reach like, oh my gosh, like this was so thoughtful. Yes, of course. I'd love to like, no problem. Things like that, you know? Yeah. You know, it's funny. Uh, Todd was saying too, <clears throat> um, you can get in front of influencers <clears throat> when you're on their list and you respond to their emails yep. that way. You know, so that's a great way. Um, Jason was saying he gets those outreach e emails all the time Ooh. and he doesn't have guest posts. Also on this five minute podcast where he answers one question per day, yep. people want to get I... a guest on. And it's like, <laughs> hey, hey, here's a random PR person. My, my client's writing a book. Can you have them on? It's like, cool. So you get paid. If you get them on my podcast, you get paid. Um, they're super happy. And all I get is a whole bunch of editing work and pushing this person to my audience. Like you just, 
there's nothing in it for me. I, all those podcast requests and interview requests, I respond like my minimum sponsored podcast fee is a thousand dollars. Are you still interested? Nobody ever replies. Um, one time I even, <laughs> awesome. I, even I repitched and I said, Hey, I think you could 10 X the ROI of these cold emails that you're sending out. My consulting fees started a thousand dollars. We actually had some back and forth and eventually I was like, I don't want to do this. Um, but like, <laughs> I'll just re-pitch. Like if I, if you're sending me a pitch and I think I can pitch you better about pitching, uh, I will. Um, but yeah, like we all get those emails and they're the worst because they just offer no value and there's no relationship. But like if you, if Kim, you reach out to me and you're like, Hey, I have this friend and they're putting out a book and I th they're amazing. Um, I want to connect you. I'm in, I'm totally in because I have a mutual connection and I trust you. And if you trust them, then I'm good. I'm already sold. I don't need to even need to talk to them. Let's just schedule it. Um, so I think that's really valuable, but it's all about, again, like those relationships versus that. And I want to add to like, yeah, get on their list, but also like if they have a big list, they might get a lot, like buy their products, get into their coaching mm -hmm. program. Like what's a link in a relationship with somebody that's maybe not 20 steps ahead of you. I'm not trying to become best friends with Tim Ferriss. Right. Um, but somebody who's like three steps ahead of me, five mm -hmm. steps ahead of me. Um, like those are the people I want to surround myself with because like they're going to pull me up as well. I've been in the same, we found this out the other day because we actually looked back at our first emails together. My mastermind group has been together for four and a half years and that is monumental. Mastermind groups just do not stick together for that long. And like we have become like very successful, influential people. And now we have those, we have four and a half years of relationship with each other. And now we're connecting each other with this person. Hey, I need to, I need to know somebody who can do Facebook ads. I need to know somebody who can do this. Hey guys, I'm looking to do guest posts. Who do you think I should reach out to? Oh, I know this person that like, it, it's all about the relationships. And like, what's cool is that like, yes, this is SEO advice, but it's, a, it's really business advice. And what I'm trying to tell people, uh, help everybody understand is like, it's not easy, but it's also not that complicated. You got a ton of great comments here too. And uh, <laughs> Jason was saying he loves it and he's adding it to his canned reply. Um, Todd loves the, the yeah. real piece. And you know, it's so funny because <clears throat> I did this, I had one of those companies reach out to me. And the crazy thing is the gal that reached out did a video and she said, I listened to this episode. It was so good. I was like, oh my gosh, I love this person. But yet the two people then that, that I ended up and I was like, I'm never doing this again. One was a horrible interview. I'm not going to publish like no conversation. And, and I know I'm chatty and all of that, but like I would, t I, I did a story and like, it was dead, like airtime. I'm like, are you there? Like it was really, really weird. But it's one of those things where I'm just thinking, I don't need to do this. I know enough. I don't mean like I know enough people, but I'm like, I'd rather have you on the show five times because we have a relationship than yep. some random person who's got a, a thing. And it's funny because I had one person one time who would send me people who had published books. And I, and I finally said back, I said, you know what? I'm happy to continue this, but they need to at least share the episode with their audience. I'm getting tired. I'm like, it's really weird to me when someone says, hey, can you use your platform to promote me, but I'm not gonna share because I'm too important and I've got other stuff to do. It's like, so I really kind of pivoted that dream 100 too. And it's just, the relationship piece. I'm like, that's why we're here doing this right now. Well, look at, you know, my case study for this is really recently has been two things. So number one, uh, this person also applies to what we're talking about. Uh, Jordan Harbinger, uh, formerly of the art of charm. And now he has the Jordan Harbinger show. And Jordan had a co-promotion in the agreement when he had guests on, cause that's like a lot of what art of charm ended up being is like people who had stuff to promote would come on. And he had like a co-promotion deal. Like you will email this, you will tweet this, you will do these things. Um, and that's like, there's no negotiating. Like this is a con or like there's financial incentive, like for me to pursue you if you don't. Um, because like the platform was that big. And I think everybody should have that. Like if you're going to have a guest on your podcast um, and it's not somebody that you're dying to have, like somebody that's kind of been asked, be like, Hey, I want to know how big your email list is. I want to know what you can do for me. How many followers do you have X, Y, and Z? I want in contract in writing that you're going to promote this to those people. Um, but like, let's look at Jordan. So Jordan effectively quit slash got fired from the art of charm. And this is so funny. Uh, the other guy there who I thought it was his brother forever, uh, AJ Harbinger. He's like, AJ 
that's not even his real last name. He just took my last name. Another dude <laughs> took my last name for branding. So people would think we were related. And he still uses Harbinger. Wow. Jordan's like, it's so weird. Um, but <laughs> that's it, creepy. Jordan immediate, like, Jordan immediately left there, started his own show. He took Art of Charms producer, went, like, took the producer, started his own show, immediately had an agreement with uh, Podcast One, his form, like Art of Charms like podcast kind of network, got on there, immediately had advertisers wanting to be on his show, immediately got all of these guests, immediately could get on anybody's show because of relationships. And that's like what he, I don't know if he sells it now, but he has a course um, like on his website about like how to, how to have adult relationships, like how to catch up with people you haven't talked about, talked to in a while. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I like recently reached out, I followed some of his stuff and I texted somebody I hadn't talked to in a while just to catch up. And it turns out like in the interim of us not talking, he became like, not the CEO, but like the president of uh, the one thing. I forget the author's name who wrote that. Oh, it's I've a, got the book. Yeah. It's an organization now and he's the president of it. And it's like, like if I hadn't reconnected, like we wouldn't have even mm -hmm. been in each other's ecosystem. So like my point is again, like the relationships, the relationships, the relationships, they matter so much. Um, and the more you play the long game with this, the more, the better it is for SEO, but also just for your business. Yeah. Jason was saying too, <clears throat> uh, he was talking to Matt Madero, and we're talking about how people, guests don't share and promote and, mm -hmm. And I'm sure I've dropped the ball on that somewhere. So I apologize to everybody if I have. Yep. But I, I really at least try to use the platform and, and get other people out there. But it's it's crazy too. It's and and he's saying, you know, they provide a link, tweetable, Facebook, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. It's super easy. And it's it's funny because I think what happens is, and, and this is just more of a mindset thing with a lot of people, like, oh, I've got work to do, right? Yep. And they don't treat that stuff like work. And I, and and that is the foundation. <laughs> That everything else is built on. Um, yeah, it, it's a fascinating thing. And I know the whole Dream 100 is funny because I think even approaching that, I love that you're addressing that and, and teaching it because a lot of people are going to go, okay, I'm going to make this monster list. Of, here's a great example. So I did, we did some outreach when we had the Kickstarter going to mm -hmm. like 10 influencers, right? And I think we got responses from three. Mm -hmm. They all said no, but it was legit. And, mm -hmm. But I'm like, we asked, right? So I'm like, that's okay. But it was really, and it's funny because we're going to send them all a planner anyways, because mm -hmm. I appreciated, and it was a, it was a total Hail Mary pass, right? Because it was right at Christmas and no, but the whole thing was, it was like, you got to back into that equation, right? And I, and I totally know that, but I was like, we have nothing to lose by asking. And so it's like, okay, now step back. And that was literally 10 people. They're still on my list. So I'm like, okay we're, we're going to, we're going to keep going in this direction with this. Um, it's, it's not as easy as, Hey, do this for me. And I so, so get that. And these are all people that I have shared their content that I've tweeted or liked their stuff, but I'm not on their radar. So I, I, I totally get that. Um, but, but I think a lot of people go, Oh, like dream 100 influencers. And they just go crazy and send stuff and do all that kind of stuff as opposed to yeah. the, the one, the baby stepping into it and, and just connecting. And, and, and go, go slow. Right. Mm -hmm. I tend to operate. Uh, I'm like the, uh, Oh gosh, what was that movie? The Tom, days of thunder, like uh, one of the first, like Tom Cruise movies. Uh, and I remember there's this scene where he's like burning out his tires, like way too early. He just drives too hard and too fast. They're like, dude, you're going through too many sets of tires in every race, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Oh, that's like the perfect analogy for what I do. Right. Like I drive so fast that I burn out my tires or I hit the wall going 300 miles an hour. Um, but you can't, you can't, you can do that to yourself. Like you can't do that with other people. You can't just like jump into like, just, I don't know, just, Hey, <laughs> here's my, here's your lumpy mail. Like here's a Rubik's cube, like all that weird stuff. No, thank you. Like, absolutely not. Like people are just probably like, Oh, slow down. But like if you'd tweeted with them for a little bit <laughs> and then bought a course and then joined their online community and then talked to them. Um, like I do, like the reason I have the testimonials I have right now from people who are, I think, wonderful, we can call them influencers. They're just pe like Paul Jarvis and Jason Zook. Like I pulled those testimonial quotes that are on like some of my pages from, they do a thing on their invisible office hours podcast called non-sponsors where they don't ask for permission and they don't like, no, those people don't give them anything. So you find out you're a non-sponsor when they say your name. Um, and I was listening to like the most recent season and I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Like I, I want to get to the point. I was literally in my head going, 
I want to get to the point one day where I would be at the level that I would be like a non-sponsor. And literally two episodes later, they're like, hey, our non-sponsor of this episode is Brendan Hufford. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like, are you freaking kidding me right now? And like, the reason was like, I just provided so much, like Paul said on there, like, he's like, I think he answers more questions in the creative class community than I do. Um, <laughs> Because like there were people with SEO questions and they, I was like, I'm in, I'm in, let's do it. And like, it was never with the intention of like, I'm going to get a testimonial. I'm going to do that. Like, screw that. Like, I just, I just believe in this stuff of like providing value and building relationships. And then eventually it just makes sense. They'll reach out to you for a quote or like, they'll mention you somewhere. You know, you can, then the ask of like, Hey, do you, can I grab like a sentence from you to put on a landing page for something? And they'll be like, kidding me yes take me five seconds and it'll mean so much to you and you already put so much forward like that's what it's about and from an seo perspective getting the links and getting the authority that you need with the way google runs now with the most recent update is that's the hands-on the best way to do it and like let's be honest like it just this is what we're really talking about it just feels right it just mm-hmm. feels right to do that kind of outreach and that kind of relationship building. The other way that most gurus teach is just doesn't feel good. It's fine if you're automating it, like you don't have to see it happening, but when you're doing it manually, it just, ugh, you just aren't proud of what you did that day, you know? Well, but even the automation piece, it's funny when you think how much time and energy do you spend doing the automation <clears throat> that feels icky, but you don't have to look at it. So it's not so bad. Whereas take all that time and, and focus on one relationship maybe, right? It's like mm-hmm. the, the time's going to weigh out and it's just, you have to be in it for the long game. And by the way, Jason was saying that Tom's response was get me better tires. Yeah. <laughs> when he burned them out. Um, I'm glad that people yeah. get that reference. <laughs> Completely. So, okay. So we're, we've, we've hit an hour here guys already. I am going to drop the link in any final notes on SEO or do you guys have any other questions for Brendan about the course. Um, I, I'm just going to tell you right now, it's like, and I don't mean this as an insult, but it's like dirt cheap. You guys. I think the course is 97 bucks. Yeah. I had somebody say that to me. They were like, Hey man, uh, it makes me nervous that this is so cheap. And I'm like, I, it looked like this is something I learned from again, like Paul and Jason. And I know a lot of people do this. These are founding memberships. You're mm-hmm. buying nothing. Like I'm mm-hmm. being really honest. Like you're buying my time and you're buying what I promise to do in the future. When you sign up, And you log into, I'm hosting it with Teachery. Like you log into your Teachery account, blank, nothing in there right now. (laughs) And the thing is, you're going to get like all the bonuses next week and we'll start doing live lessons next week. But it's like a college class. You're, you're registering for a class based on a short description in the course catalog. And I realized that. And I wanted it to be accessible for everybody. I hated when I was starting out, Kim, like feeling like, oh my gosh, this is my person. This is my tribe. This is like exactly what I want to do. I can't afford it. I can't swing that with my spouse. I can't swing that with my business. And I felt like cheaper than $97 is not valuing my own time. And, but more like for a founding membership um, where I'm going to ask you to show up live and I'm going to ask a lot of you uh, is a fair price, but also like I want to a hundred X that value. You know what I mean? Like I want you to not just, I don't want to just 10 X it. I don't want you to make like a grand off of the work we do together. Like I want you to make 10 grand. and I want a case study when I launch this again in six months, that is like, people are going to be like, Oh my gosh, this works so well. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. It kind of made sense, but yeah, it is, it is, I think at a place that is fair But also like this will easily be like when it's built out and it's, it's the way that I want it. Like this will easily be three, four or $500 course. Um, Yeah. And it certainly wasn't an insult. I was just saying like, it's a bar. I should say it's a bargain to get in. So we're going to say that. (laughs) No, no, no. But it makes sense. It's something I'm like aware of. Yeah. Is, and (laughs) and is this for life? So like if people get in now, will they get the upgraded? So if you get access, you're you're a founding member, like you get everything that I do with this forever. Um, thank you, Jason. He was saying, um, thank you for this. He loves hearing that being human and being real is still a thing since that's what I'm trying to do in my business and helping my audience. Um, yeah, it goes. I don't, it's just, it's a theory. <laughs> I'm, I'm, well, putting yeah. a lot of, I'm putting all my eggs in the basket, but, uh, it's just how I feel. Well, it's funny. And I mean, I keep saying this, but I really feel like the pendulum has shifted and it's like, it's so much less about quantity and of, of people and, and vanity metrics and all of that stuff. People get that it's BS. It's not working. 
I don't know if you've listened or read the new Seth Godin book, This Is Marketing. It's quit. It is one of my most absolute favorite books. Really? I mean, it's so base. I mean, I, I listened to the audio and I was like, I have to get this book. There's like nuggets that I need to highlight. So I did. Amazon loves me. I buy it twice. Can I be honest? I don't, I can't handle Seth Godin because I can't rethink my life every day. (laughs) I can't, every time I read his blog or hear anything from him, I get this feeling of like, what are you even doing with your life? Like you're not raising your hand and you're taking your turn and being a generous leader. And it's just, (laughs) oh. It's so good and it's so convicting and it feels right and it feels like it touches like like kind of like Brene Brown like touches something very deep in my heart. Mm-hmm. Like Seth does the same thing, but it makes me nervous because like I don't want to confront those things about myself right now. Um, but yeah, I'm sure it's amazing. You get to Seth when you can do a little deep dive. <laughs> When I have three weeks of like nothing to do. <laughs> no, for what it's worth, Brendan, I think Seth will, ju- it, he just, it, it validates everything you talk about. So cool. I think there's a lot of synchronicities there. Uh, Jason just bought the course. So woohoo, I will see Thanks, you. Jason. Um, very exciting. So Brendan, I just adore you. I love chatting with you. You make me laugh. So <laughs> cool. <I'm glad. laughs> there's just that in a good way, but I learn some things all the time. So you guys, if you do have questions about the course, what, when is the live course what are the live um teachings yeah so the we're doing a free class uh wednesday night uh the pillar content master class i'm sure we can drop a link to that somewhere in here and then also uh the live teachings i haven't scheduled them yet to be honest um i want to see what makes sense for the people in there now it's going to be hard because like whenever you say like hey what are the best times for you some people are going to get bummed out because i've given them an option and then Mm -hmm. pulled that option away um Mm -hmm. so that stinks but uh, I want to give people as much time as as many options as possible. Like this is a college course. So like, for example, when I went to grad school, the classes were at night because we were all working during the day. I'm assuming most of the people that are taking this course are also working during the day, except for maybe right now, because we got them all on a live stream at 7 a.m. your time. Uh, but I do think that, so like, we're I don't know. I don't know what times they're going to be at, but we're going to do one per week for the next four weeks after the course launches or, or after the launch closes on Friday. So that's kind of the plan. Uh, I am going to try this, but, uh, Jean-Francois, I hope I said your name right. He said yeah. the first time he's heard about you, but he really loves your teaching style. So the course starts next week. You just don't have the definitive date and time. Yeah. Um, yeah. no, I don't have like weekday and week time yet of when they're going to be at. And I think like, yeah, it'll also depend just because I'm sure there's people that are all over the globe that are signing up. Um, mm-hmm. that'll be a big thing is just getting in touch with everybody as they're signing up. Um, so yeah, I don't have like the exact date and times. The cool thing is you get access to, you can ask questions ahead of time on Crowdcast and then watch the replay where I answer those questions. We'll also have like Q&A office hours that people can attend that'll be live. And like I said, like this is all about access. So you have unlimited email access to me of like, hey man, I just watched the replay. You said this, what did that mean? How would it apply to my bit? Like you can ask your teacher, all those questions you would ask in class of like, hey, I run an e-commerce company. We make socks. Like you said to do this. How does it apply to that? I don't really mm-hmm. get that. Um, like I'm going to reply to those emails. That's why I'm not letting, I haven't set like a hard, somebody emailed me the other day uh, and they were like, how many people are you letting into this? I'm like, are you asking that to see if you have time to wait? You want to like <laughs> see the scarcity or are you genuinely asking? And I just replied very honestly, like, I don't know, but if we're getting to the point where it's like going to be like untenable for me to like reply to people and be as helpful as I want to, like I am going to cut it off. Um, So the goal is to give people as much one-on-one attention as possible. The live teaching is almost like, that's like almost what will become the uh, do it yourself, like self-paced part. I think the real value is like, I'm going to answer your questions. I'm going to interact with you. I'll answer all of your emails. We'll do live chats and things like that. Awesome. Um, Okay. Todd just bought it too. (laughs) This is great. Um, You guys, well, tell them, too, like, Kim will be in there, everybody who's watching. Like, Kim's taking the course, too. Um, so, And I'm going to document it because everything is content. I'm in a document. I want to be a case study because, obviously, I love content. Um, so, um, and, and if you're listening to this on the podcast, I, I am because I'm going to repurpose this and get it up so yeah. it can go out this week. Um, but just go to kimdoyle.com forward slash Brendan, and it's B-R-E-N-D-A-N. Um, just that it's not an affiliate link, but just go there because, uh, it's a long link for the, the course for teachery. Um, yeah. but that's it, you guys. So thank you so much for joining us. 
Um, I will see some of you, many of you in the course. I'm excited. And Brendan, you rock. That was a ton of fun, as always. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much, Kim, especially so early in the morning. I appreciate it. And I appreciate <laughs> everybody else for uh, hopping on live, too. This is amazing. Thanks. Yeah, I may have to do more early lives. This was a great crowd, but also it was the guest. So, <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Thanks.